he's known as by a number of names, um, as an urban archaeologist, and he's also known as the Transformer. Um, for his ability to draw from forms of traditional African American art and create his own um, forms of work that are contemporary in a variety of different media. In doing so, he's transforming everyday objects into mass produced, excuse me, everyday, everyday mass produced objects into precious icons and symbolic representations that explore identity, diversity, and commercialization. Cole attended Boston University School of Fine Arts and received his BFA degree from the School of Visual Arts in New York. And he continued his studies at the, Stu the Art Students League of New York from 1976 to 1979. He has an esteemed exhibition record. Some recent exhibitions include Deep Impressions, uh, which is an exhibition in Memphis, Tennessee at the Brooks Museum of Art. And that was just recent as of this year, 2011. Post Black and Blue at Alexander and Bowen Gallery in New York. Um, a retro retrospective traveling exhibition, Anxious Objects, uh, Willie Cole's favorite brand, which has been presented at the Cantor Center of Art um, at Sta um, Stanford University in Stanford, California, the Fry Art Museum in Seattle, Washington, and the Brigham Museum of Art in Michigan. He has also ha um, had exhibitions and also exists in multiple um, significant collections, such as the Whitney Museum of American Art, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Fabric Workshop and Museum in Philadelphia, the Institute of um, the Institute of Contemporary Art (PS1), uh, Long Island, excuse me, Long Island Museum, the Kemper Museum of Contemporary Art in Kansas City, the St. Louis Art Museum, the Polar Art Center, um, and the Bronx Museum of Art. Excuse me, the Bronx Museum of um, arts and Contemporary Art in Chicago, um, and the Aldrich Museum of Contemporary Art in Connecticut. So, and that's just to name, name some. He is a recipient of several awards, including the 2006 winner of the David Driscoll Prize, the first national award to honor and celebrate contributions in the field of African American art and art history, which was established by the High Museum of Art in Atlanta. He's also received the Augusta St. Memorial Fellowship and the Joan Mitchell Foundation Award. So um, Willie has been very busy today visiting with several of you and in individual critiques. Um, he's also presented his work, um, which is an acquisition um, purchased in part by, uh, with support from the Ready for the World Initiative at this currently on display at the Black Cultural Center. Um, that piece is also part of the um, Museum of Modern Art that we now have as part of the Ewing Gallery Collection. Um, and tomorrow, he will also be giving a student workshop, um, contemporary development workshop, which will be at noon. So I'm going, um, without further ado, I present to you our artist, Lily Cole. say African art, transformation of African art into contemporary art from common objects. And known by, also known by the name Black Gomez, that's my music name, also known as Willie the Scorch, because of my history with the steam art. <laughs> and if I was uh, Italian in the mafia, that would be my hit man name. <laughs> So I have a new computer here that I've never done a PowerPoint on before. I hope it all works out. Also, I have so many over 35 years of images. So I'm only showing a small part of what I do here. All right. Yes. i 
chronological, but I start with this piece because it used to be such a top over this. <laughs> um, I have a big interest in filmmaking, so I started making videos about some of my installations. So I have a few of those in here today. But this piece is called the Intellectua Principle, and it's relevant to my life because it really represents the Europe of God, the Intellectua, who is the presenter of, of choices. So when you go to your closet in the morning, you see 20 shirts. The Intellectua presents those to you. He doesn't make the choice for you, you make the choice. So as an artist, I'm confronted with choices every day with every material. So this seemed like an appropriate piece to start. Also, just music in the background was a song I made for my wife's dance company a few years ago. This is like in the 90s. And someone asked me this morning about challenging projects, and I mentioned uh, one with the sailboat. And this is the second most challenging project because the budget was so low. And I had to make this room a revolving door and it just felt like the right thing to do. And I actually went to a craft store and purchased beads to put on the bottom of each door to make them roll, roll smoothly across the floor. There's no budget for like, you know, ball bearing, line kind of stuff. And this is at the Cap Street, uh, Cap Street Center, I think it was called. It used to be in San Francisco. So this has given me a time to calm down by saying all this Say this is the gallery director who's walking through these doors with me. And the homeless man I met on the street was an opera singer. He said he was taking my opening, but he backed out when the time came. It's just the three of us going through. This piece was made in San Francisco. The San Francisco door is then dismantled. I created a similar piece for a show in Paris that was purchased by a museum in Lorraine, France. I created one more for a show at the Chicago, it's called the Chicago Museum of Fine Art when it was brand new. They had a show called Performance Anxiety. I did this piece there. I actually did a talk there also. The funny thing was during my talk, because the show was called Performance Anxiety, I decided to do a performance. <laughs> and I'm also known for writing uh, acronyms and making sentences of acronyms. So my performance was acronyms. After I went through like 45 minutes of acronyms based on the word art, the first question from the audience was, are you going to show your work? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that was missing in this piece was there's actually this video guy came into the gallery before the piece was completed. And he uh, he didn't give us a chance to get the words on the doors. Actually, each door had words on it. So you're choosing your path in life. You walk to, you know, revolving doors. So you walk to one door and it says fried chicken. The door next to you might say sirloin steak. You have to choose when to go through it. So every time you push a door, you have a new choice. So that, so that completes the piece. So these next few slides, I present them only because I'm at a university and there might be some undergrads here. So I just wanted to show you, this is how I came out of high school, doing paintings like this. There was an illustrator named uh, Carl Clarewey. He was known also as Abdul Mati. He did covers for Carlos Santana. He did Ibraxas cover. He did Miles Davis' Bitches Group cover. Several Miles Davis covers that he inspired me and all my friends. We thought he was a black man because he did so many images of Africa and the Middle East. But, but he was from Spain. And he inspired us all. So just. So I think this presentation will just show you the evolution of an artist. Like I'm 56 years old now. I was 17 here. Uh, this was me in college. Uh, my last year of college, was, which was 1976. I, I broke away from what my teachers were doing because my teachers were all illustrators. My major was graphic design and illustration. But I got really into Impressionism and Japanese and woodblock artists like Hokusai. So I started doing things more in that compositional style and that color style. And I ended up for two years making a living doing portraits on the street in pastels. <coughs> I did get a job for a little while at a, at a uh, beachside place in New Jersey doing portraits. But because I was like inspired by Impressionism, I didn't want to be <coughs> color black. So all of my people, customers who had black hair, ended up with 